He's only 18 years old, a senior in high school. But today, Spencer Robarge is in the hunt to become the youngest player to ever win a guaranteed rate PBA Tour event. And he's looking to do it here in a major championship, the USBC Masters. Can this teenager really take down some of Pro Bowling's best, including top seed Jesper Svensson? Let's find out today on FS1. Reno, Nevada, the biggest little city in the world, is home to the National Bowling Stadium. Venerable, historic, one of the true landmarks of the sport. Today it hosts the 2021 USBC Masters TV Final. Five of the world's best bowlers are here, competing for a major championship, big prize money, and a part of bowling history. After one of the most grueling, the most challenging weeks you'll see on tour, step ladder finals today. We start with the fifth seed, Spencer Robars, an 18-year-old high school senior. That's right, a high school senior against the four seed, Chris Five. The three seed is Jason Sterner. The two seed Denmark's Thomas Larson, who has never won a major, but the number one seed has the Iceman himself, Jesper Svensson of Sweden, the powerful, talented, two-handed lefty. Welcome to Reno and FS1's coverage of the 2021 USBC Masters. Great to have you with us. Dave Ryan alongside the Hall of Famer Randy Peterson, joined by Kimberly Presler as well. First of all, Randy, whoo, so glad the Masters is back after COVID KO'd it last year. What a challenging week. Incredibly difficult qualifying and match play. Sometimes the luck of the draw helps. Yeah. And Spencer Robarge, an incredible story. Really is. He's a high school senior from Springfield, Missouri, on the verge of history. Yeah, and before you get to that, I just want to wish everyone a happy Easter, and I want to wish you a happy Easter, Ooh, partner. What so do you I, have? I got you some chocolate. Ah, Snickers. Perfect. Let's get back to the Spencer Robarge guy. Now, remember, it wasn't that long ago that we saw him in Jupiter, Florida, in the PBA Junior uh, National Championships, which he won. And this kid, remember, the theme was legit, legit. And here he is. He's back again. And in this event, he took out some heavy hitters. There's Mitch Hoopay, who he defeated. Then he took on Zeke Bate and beat him. You know that this Spencer Robarge kid, he's got 41 USBC certified 300 games. Amazing. That's a USBC record. And then he ran into Jesper Svensson. Put a little scare into Jesper early, but Jesper would hold on in the three game total pinfall match. Jesper would win by 50. Remember, you said grueling. You can see it right there. It's all over every player's face. And that was really a great theme in this event. Speaking of Jesper, one of Randy's favorites, only 26 years old from Sweden. He's got 10 tour titles. He's en route to the Hall of Fame one day. He's the only bowler on our show who has a major title. Yeah, and you know, the first time I ever laid eyes on Jesper Svensson was in this building back in 2015 at the World Series of Bowling. And here he is winning the Chameleon Championship. I remember tour rep Timmy Mack coming up to me and saying, you got to see this kid from Sweden. And I, I just couldn't believe what I was watching. I couldn't take my eyes off of him. And in 2017, we come back to Reno once again for the World Series of Bowling. And here's Jesper winning the Cheetah Championship. He would then go on to finish second to Jace Belmonte in the World Championship. Jesper Svensson is an absolute wrecking ball. And he's the only player on our telecast today with a major victory to his credit. Spencer Robarge is not back home in Springfield, Missouri, getting ready for a senior prom like most high school seniors are. He's here in Reno, Nevada, getting set to compete for a major title, and he's joined now by Kimberly. He sure is. Thanks, Dave. So, Spencer, we just saw you a few short weeks ago at the PBA National Championship, which you won, and that was the jersey you wanted. Did you wear it for good luck today? I did. Um, I really wanted to be able to wear the same shirt and the same pants. Um, to be uh, hopefully lucky enough to win this tournament. So, Well, let's talk about the fact that you have done something at the young age of 18 that your idols like Jason Belmonte and Norm Duke were not able to do, and that is make a major telecast at 18 years old as an amateur. So how surreal was this morning for you? It's, it's unbelievable. I, never in my wildest dreams would I have thought that I could get here, but I'm going to take the opportunity and hopefully run with it. So. Well, you seem pretty calm and collected, so how are the nerves today? Uh, they're there, but uh, hopefully if I can get through this first match, uh, hopefully I can calm them down just a little bit. All right, well, best of luck to you today. Thank you. A very unique oil pattern here at the USBC Masters, 40 feet in length, but the unique part of this pattern, something that I've never seen before, is the speed bump at 40 feet. Take a look here, we're gonna draw in a little tighter. You see this speed bump? 
what that's done is it's made the pattern even flatter than it already is. You're going to see five players today play this pattern five different ways. Larson and Jason Sterner are going to go real straight from out. The two two-handed lefties are going to play very close to the gutter. Jesper should be inside of that. And Chris Vai is actually going to slow hook it from the middle part of the lane. Time to meet our first competitor. He's 18 years old from Springfield, Missouri, a member of Team USA. Here's Spencer Robarge. The two-headed southpaw sensation is back. And remember, we told you, he's legit. He said his dream is to bowl on the PBA Tour someday. That day is now. What a story for the youngster who's bound for Wichita State to bowl for the powerhouse Shocker program in the fall. With those spectacular hits, this guy has style. Oh. Oh. And he's got a strike. He doesn't have a 7-10, Rand. He's got a strike to begin his day. Our next bowler comes to us from Springfield, Ohio, who now lives in Columbus, looking for his first career title. Let's say hello to Chris Vai. Chris Vai making his fourth major championship round appearance in the last six major events. Today, he looks for his first win ever. And what better way to do it than here at the Cathedral of Bowling, the National Bowling Stadium. Two-hander versus two-hander. Lefty versus righty. Chris Fye. What a talent. This guy's really figured it out as of late. Now he has one thing left to do, and that's to win. Right lane starts his day. Wow. Perfect. And there's that line you can see on strike track where Chris Vai is going to be playing inside and opening the lane up, but his ball speed has to be perfect to get the ball back from that spot. Two-handed style. Remember, folks, they don't put their thumb inside the bowling ball. And we're seeing it more and more and more. Three of our five players today using that two-handed no-thumb style. Fourth time in basically the last 12 months, as you see his arsenal, he's been on a major show, but he's never won. Maybe that changes here today in Reno. Attacks the left lane, Randy. Looking for help. He gets some help. Tap on the 10. Well, we saw that first hit by Robarge, which was spectacular. And take a look at this nice break and a little love tap on the 10 pin. Chris Vi just feeding it out to that 4-5 board down lane. And look at this pin action. Oh. Down it goes. I'm just thinking, Randy, with the challenging conditions, how hard it was to get here. A break early? It's got to make you feel good. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, wow. Blisters the one-two pocket with power. Well, that's the thing with the two-handed style is, is it's all about power. And uh, it, it really opens up the pocket and creates uh, a lot of really good pin action. Yes, you hear the disco night fever. Night fever. He, he's really a, a he's an a, old a, soul. He's really a unique young man. Um, just an absolute pleasure to talk to. Um, and then some of his his likes that then the stuff that he's into. We'll get to that in a second. Left lane. Oh boy. He's locked in early. This is a young man, Randy, who is not on Twitter. You heard that right. Yeah, he said he's like technically challenged. Take a look at the line. He's playing right up first arrow on the left with a non-reactive or urethane bowling ball. Saw a lot of that this week. See, old guys like me love to hear that. Not into the technology, not into the digital. I know, age. he's just, 
There's so much on him. That's awesome. Right now, it's Chris By looking to even it up, working on a double. We'll stay perfect here. Oh, oh, oh. Not uh, quite. Man, just a pinch high leaving the nine pin. Everything but the nine. Yeah, but, you know, some nice accuracy early on here by Chris Vise. He's trying to feed it out that, that uh, five or six board down lane at the break point. And the break point is where the bowling ball starts to curve back to the pocket, folks. And that's what the players try to get the ball to consistently. Strike streak over at five combined. Five has his nine pin, has his mark. Not easy to get this far. Chris Vi told us last night, mentally, he was drained. He was shot. He barely slept the night before because he knew it was coming here yesterday in Reno. Remember, those are all three game total pin matches. And then remember that there's also practice in between each one of those matches. It's just a grueling, grueling event. Some big names. This is the mark by a lot. 2 4 10. You can see that he got it right of target right there. And there's a lot of oil in that part of the lane. So, what he's going to try to do now is get that bowling ball over here to the left side of the two pin and cut that two into the 10. Under 20% conversion rate on this tricky spare on two. See how Chris I fares. He hates it. Didn't like it for good reason. Real close. Drops before. Only an eight pin count. So Robarge on the bench, who has a turkey to begin. Now looking for the front four. Sees the lead now expand to 26. A strike makes it 36 pins. His road. Well, lost to Jesper. Last night, as Randy talked about, top of the broadcast. But knocked out some really talented bowlers to get this far. Looks to the front four. Has it. Man. That was like, uh, I think he just got flagged on that shot for unnecessary roughness on the 10 pin. 15 yards, unnecessary oh. roughness, repeat, first down. Just beating pins up. Look at that 10 pin just get tomahawked. That was my best referee impersonation. Do you like that? Football theme. Can the kid keep it going? Looking for the front five. Come on. Everything but the six pin, and that was a great shot. All right, spare it up. Come on. You can see the tracer right here. He's pretty much on top of every shot he's thrown, but that ball there broke loose. You can see the two lines down lane. This one just hooked a little bit more, and that could be the transitioning of the oil pattern. You can see the oil being picked up on that bowling ball. Remember, folks, that when you throw a bowling ball in the same spot enough times, it's going to dry out that part of the lane. Six pin, single pin, spare conversion. Keep in mind, he's not a PBA member. This would not be a PBA tour title. It's a tour event if he were to win it. But the money that he's already won goes to his college, college scholarship fund, which, by the way, is more than $75,000 in right now. Yeah, he, he, it goes to his 75 grand. It goes to his USBC smart account, and it maxes out at 100 k It's amazing. Um, this kid's on his way to Wichita State, and he's going to have some money in the bank to, uh, to be able to eat. Good for him. Here's Vi. Yeah. Four pin tap late, down it goes. Well, right-hander's best friend is that little love tap on the four pin. And for Chris Vi, that's a nice uh, welcomed sight after the open frame in the fourth. He told us last night this was the most challenging run to a TV show in his career. It's a guy who made the U.S. Open okay. last year. Lincoln lost. World Championship in Vegas lost early. This year in Tampa lost. Here he is again. Finished fourth. March 13th. Lost the Buttriff. Doherty won it. Tampa Tom. Maybe this is his day. 
He's yeah. got all the talent in the world, Randy. He does, and he's figured it out, and, and he's got the confidence now to go along with the ability. But right now, to get back into this, he's going to have to string some more strikes. He's trailing by 25, working on a double. He could cut that deficit to five when we come back. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. If you believe it, you can do it. Guaranteed Rate. Believe you will. And by Kia, introducing the all-new Sorento, the world's first storytelling machine. A one-hour drive to spectacular Lake Tahoe. It is such a beautiful part of the country. Other finishers, Randy Sam Cooley just missed the show. Yeah, tough break uh, that last game to, for the seating where uh, Spencer Robards barely hung on by like seven pins. Four-time champ, Jason Belmonte, 15th this week. There's Kyle Troop, a major champ already this year, but out of the show again. Did you know that Kyle Troop's leading the tour in money in uh, earnings? Yes, with I over, did. With over 300,000. Yeah, 250,000. What? Players. 300,000. Oh, I mean, I'm not real good with math, but 300,000 sounds like a lot. Let's take a look at some of Spencer Robards' pin action. This is frame one, and that was just dirtier than a gas station bathroom. And then he follows it up with a real nice light mixer there. He's got a 25-pin lead halfway through game one. Back at the 70th USBC Masters. And here is the kid, 18 years old, from Springfield, Missouri. Spencer Robards. Six frameworks on a spare. Right lane. Oh, oh. Yeah, he's starting to get some, some early friction now, Dave. And he's going right. to see, see, six. Him, see him kind of motioning to the right. Gonna open two. He's going to have to move his feet and his target and get out of this hook spot right there. This looks like a really good shot, and then you can see that that ball actually hooked more than any shot he's thrown in this game. Just the four. Leaves the six. Open frame. You know, I always say that, that tempo e down. every shot makes somebody happy. And that shot really made Chris Vi happy because now Chris Vi only trails by 12. He's working on a double, and he could actually take the lead for the first time in this match with strikes in the seventh and the eighth frame. Spencer's not thinking about this right now. The PBA Boys Junior National Championship winner in Jupiter, but he could be the youngest ever to win a PBA Tour event, younger than Norm Duke in Cleveland. That shot. Seven pins down here, and it's a new ball game because Chris Vye's working on a double when he steps up for his next shot. You know, and, and I always ask myself, this shot here, is that like the residue of the last two shots that he's thrown where he's gone high both shots, and there he, he comes in light, leaving the 3-5-6. Takes Ooh. care of that one. Three, five, six. Tough leave. Robarge has his spare. Let's take a look at Strike Track, powered by Kia. Yeah, and this is a 3D showing the difference in how these two players are actually playing this oil pattern. You can see that Chris Vi is the blue ball and how much later it gets to the pocket because he has to throw it so much slower because he's creating so much more angle. Speaking of colors, do you like the red oil? I do. It's awesome. It really pops on TV. Here's Vi trying to take advantage. Oh, my. Oh. Well, that's a big inside miss right there. Uh. And I don't know if he made a big adjustment and just kind of tried to trust it, but that's a good two boards, uh, or, excuse me, almost three boards left at the break point. I think this is just a pulled shot. 4-9, Randy. And a tough conversion coming up here for Chris Vi. Who had a shot at the lead, working on a double. New ball game again here. Chris loses count. And things are tight in our first match. Well, that was a golden opportunity for Chris. And then he got it inside a target and then paid the price with a pocket 4-9. And now the lead for Robards goes back to 28.
best finish. Andrew Anderson won in Syracuse in 2018. Chris was top 25. Left lane, no help. Messenger across the pin deck, misses the 10 pin. And it's looking better and better for the kid here. Just enough. That was a little thin. Well, not looking great for Chris Vi, but Spencer Robarge has missed the pocket the last two shots in the sixth and seventh. So it's, these next two are going to be very telling. Right lane, Robard. You bet. Are you surprised at how cool this kid is on the lanes today? No. Uh, the, the youth bowlers of today are so much better prepared. This kid has bowled hundreds of tournaments. I mean, you you made mention of how much money he has in his smart account. I mean, think about it. Amazing. When when maybe a first place event is like five hundred dollars. I mean. This kid is bold in live stream events. He's bold on television before. What he did last night just to hold on to this fifth spot was the most impressive thing I've seen in a while. The high school senior from Go. Kickapoo High in Missouri. All right. Home of the Fighting Chiefs. Nine pins on that shot. Leaves the six pin. Spare it up, kid. Come on. He told us last night, Spare Randy up. Earl Anthony, by far his favorite. He thought the best bowler of all time because of winning the 14 titles and the amount of time Earl did it. Well, he felt that Earl was the best all time. And and, and it was because of that time frame. Uh, Walter Ray has the longevity and the most titles. And he made some great points. Did did you mention the fact that, you know, so we, he, he loves 70s disco and rock. His favorite movie is Kingpin. And did you know that he, he loves someone playing. I know was in that movie. I was in that movie. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, don't blink. Uh, and did you know that he like he he loves playing pinball? Fantastic. He's in a pinball league. I mean, it's That's just awesome. This kid's unbelievable. He is an old soul. Five's got to make some magic happen here. Right lane, foundation frame, meets it, gets it. Yeah, you see the max score there to your right, 226 for Robards and 208 for Chris Vi. So let me set up uh, the scenario for you. Chris Vi needs to strike out and force Robards to get any kind of mark in the 10th frame. If Chris Vi does not strike out, Spencer Robards is moving on to face Jason Sterner in our next match. And by the way, that is not digital pinball or something. No, no, no. We're no, talking about no. actual pinball machines. No, we're talking like real Physical, pinball. real pinball machine. And I, I'll have you know, after this shot. Yeah, beauty there, shot. I'm I'm kind of a savant when it comes to, to pinball. I did not know that about you. Yeah, I love pinball. I have known you all these years. I That's love pinball. pinball. Beautiful shot here by Chris Vi to give himself a chance. One more good count. He forces Robards to get any mark on a very demanding oil pattern where we've already seen anything can happen. To have any chance, he has to have this one. It's a good hashtag. Spencer won't use it on Twitter. Anything can happen, because he doesn't do Twitter. But I do. Gotta have it. To keep the pressure up on the youngster. Three, six, ten, stand, didn't get it. Well, it's another great event for Chris Vi, but another disappointment for him on television as he will fail to advance. But think about what he's done, making four out of the last six major telecasts. It's pretty impressive. Mom Angie, Dad Craig, Sister Katie, his niece Kenzie all watching back home in Ohio. As Chris Vi makes another great run.
But how about the history we are seeing unfold for Robarge, first PBA USBC national TV show. The junior national championship was great. This is against the best in the world. It's going to take a re-rack to soak it in a little bit. I mean, this is an incredible story, Randy. The re-rack there is a little unusual, I think, when the match is in hand. I'm not sure he only needs five pins, so. All right, come on. It's one good shot. Right Maybe here. he's just, uh, just trying to, you know, take his time and keep himself composed. Okay. He's got eight. He's got the win. A okay. Knocks off Chris Fai and the three seed Jason Sterner awaits this 18 year old high school senior. Good luck the rest of the way. All right. Good sportsmanship for Chris Fives. Got to be disappointed. He felt last night he was lined up on this pattern. So challenging. But the youngster just too good today. Spencer Robards. Springfield, Thanks. Missouri, All right. Thanks. has won on a USBC Masters show over Chris Fye. Who's next? Jason Sterner, Rochester, New York. Randy, this one will be fun. Yeah, it's going to be great. The, the youngster, Spencer Robarge, against the journeyman looking for his first ever major title. All right, Randy, let's recap the 2021 Guaranteed Ray PBA Tour Major Championship schedule. Kyle Troop got it done, Players' Championship, a cool $250,000. Then also in Jupiter, Florida, Francois Lavoie, the TOC. Yeah, he, uh, he climbed the ladder and won another major. And then how about Tom Doherty, Tampa Tom? He was absolutely amazing at the, the World Series of Bowling, capturing the World Championship and another title. Troop, Lavoie, Tampa Tom. Today, we'll find out who wins the USBC Masters. US Open is here in Reno at this venerable National Bowling Stadium next week as well. Two o'clock Eastern here on FS1. This, this is the Taj Mahal of bowling. Always so great to be yeah. back here. Truly historic. And how about history with Spencer Robarge? Fantastic in that first match. 213, 194 over a very talented Chris Vi. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty impressive. And then remember, right before we went to commercial, he, uh, we were talking about why he took that re rack in the 10th frame when the match was virtually over. And we went to break and we heard him say to his tour rep, he said, I'm sorry I did that. I, I'm nervous. And I'm like, this kid doesn't look nervous at all. <laughs> what advice would you have for him as a Hall of Famer? Now it's match number two. He's got one win under his belt. What do you say to him? Uh, don't think it'll only hurt the ball club. <laughs> I mean, just keep doing what you're doing. Follow the transition and just be instinctive, man. I mean, if you see your ball do something and you feel like you have to make an adjustment, just do it. Don't second guess yourself. Let's update our bowling fans on the Kia PBA playoff points list. Top 16 make it to the playoffs coming up this year, Randy. It'll be in Connecticut. And number one is Kyle Troop. Tom Dory, of course, number two after that tremendous run in Tampa, winning not one but two titles. Yeah, what a, a week for Tom Doherty at the World Series of Bowling in Tampa. Just incredible. See, Sterner is just on the outside looking in, and boy, a, a win here with double points would certainly get him rich quick. Jason Sterner would love to win his first career major here in Reno, Nevada at the USBC Masters. He'll take on the kid, Robarge, next. There is Cecil Scarborough. Tour rep for one, yes, for Spence in our top seed chatting moments ago. Cecil also our ace statistician in the booth. Does it all for us. 
Jesper getting ready. Top of the step ladder. There's Jesper Svensson bidding for his second career major. He's had a lot of success in this building, as Randy talked about, top of the broadcast. Spencer Robarsh, only 18 years old, beats Chris by first match. Next up for him, the three-seat Jason Sterner. From Rochester, New York, a 16-year pro on the PBA Tour. They call him the Flash. The number three seed, here's Jason Sterner. Jason making his first ever major telecast. The 16-year veteran has three titles to his credit. His last win coming in 2019. He's in the best shape of his life, both physically and mentally. The time now for Jason to go next level is now. Let's see RP if that happens with the flash. Let's try that time. Saw him last. World Series of Bowling, Chameleon Show. Really good start for Sterner. He was the low man out in the elimination first round. And just like we talked about in the Open, where he's going to be playing, and he's staying with it. His game plan was the same throughout this event. He never got to the left of second arrow on his side of the lane. All right, let's see how the youngster responds now. Bound for the Shocker program. Longtime powerhouse of collegiate bowling in the fall. First, he'd like to win a title. Oh. Looks pretty good. Oh. Watch how close he is to the ball return. When he pushes that ball away, he gets real close to that capping that's sitting on top of the return. Taking a page out of Kyle Troop's book with the fancy star pants. He likes to make a fashion statement. Kyle says this young man's got style. Left lane. Nine pin. Just Nine pinch shot. light. And again, because of the surface of the non-reactive bowling balls are so coarse. They really torture an oil pattern and make the front part of the lane explode. And then it causes uh, the bowling ball to do some tricks down lane. Now strategy, now the adjustments, now the chess match as the lanes break down. Left lane, looks for a spare, has a spare. Of the show here for Jason Stern. Seven and one <laughs> match play record. You know, you know what that looks like? That looks like uh, if you were bowling league, that'd be half a season. Wow. It's a lot of bowling. And the average, you know, under 209. That's because these conditions are incredibly challenging. Look a lot. Not right. quite. Ring and 10 pin. See how straight he's going through the front part of the lane. Five and a half board at the lay down to the first arrow. So that ball is actually moving from left to right a half an inch. And that's pretty straight. Half an inch. That's it. That's, yeah, that's wow. really, really straight through the front part of the lane. Corner pin. Ten pin. He's got it. Think you got what it takes to join the. PBA Tour, head to PBA.com to learn more about PBA membership. Sign up today to register for tournaments, access discounted practice rates, exclusive product offers, and more. Become a PBA member today. We saw the PBA Junior National Championship this year in Jupiter. On the boys' side, won by this guy. Great PBA Junior programs are available now. And 
Be sure to log on to PBA.com for all the information you need. Three seed starter, left lane. Mm. Bucket leash. Yeah, and you can see the numbers right there. They don't lie. So the lay down was where he wanted it. The location of the arrows was what he wanted. Fast. But this had a little more right movement in it. And then you heard him say right there, a little fast. Navarisi doesn't convert. Eight pin stands. Yeah, let's take a look at this one more time. He, he takes a shot at the uh, bucket from the left side of the lane and misses just a fraction right and doesn't cover the back pin. This looks familiar. Robars seeing an open frame from his opponent. Got by the talented Chris Vi. First round match. Now it's Jason Sterner, and that's how you take advantage of your opponent's mistakes. You strike. Exactly how you draw it up when you're given an opening by your opponent. Here's the kid, left lane. Mm. Yeah, good shot, six pin. Close, but he's, he's having a little sure. bit of trouble on that left lane and getting his ball to do what he wants it to do. Back to back six pins now, or excuse me, a six pin, and I believe the shot in the second was a light nine pin. So when you're going light, high, light, high, that's usually a sign that kind of lost the bar reaction on that lane, and he's trying to micromanage right now to get locked into that left lane. All right, come on. And let's not free, lose sight of the fact that uh, Spencer Robards is a, a really good spare shooter. Arsenal for Sterner. Right lane. Great shot. And Kimberly, the right the hand. Like that, eh? Some injury issues for Jason, right? Yeah, he does. So you guys have talked about how grueling this event has been, but it's even more so for Jason Sterner, who lost his first match in match play, forcing him to bowl 21 games just yesterday in order to make this telecast. Now, he started at 9 a.m. and didn't leave the menu until 9.30 last night, and if that's not bad enough, all those games actually caused the skin on his bowling hand to split open in three places. Now, Jason said when bowling, the pain becomes almost unbearable. So before the show, he patched the wounds with cotton mesh and new skin, making the pain, as he says, somewhat tolerable. However, he also told me that when he bowls, his hands tend to sweat, which makes the patches roll up. So at some point, he might have to super glue the outer edges, which is where the skin is actually tearing away. Wow. Something to manage. Something to watch. That was off the mark. Looking for a little help and a bump, but not quite enough. Well, strike leaves the five pin. Jason told us during warm-ups just before the show that it felt numb. He just was okay with that right thumb at the moment. Looks like he got his hand caught in the garbage disposal. It's awful. Don't do that, by the way. A rare five-pin leave. And the mark for Sterner. How about dealing with an injury like that, Randy? You've done... Man, back I mean, in the... So many times you've had to go just pull through tremendous pain. Back in the day... All we did was take new skin, the ether, liquid ether, we'd put the patch on our cut in, in between shots, and then we'd borrow a lighter from somebody and we'd set it on fire to dry it fast enough so we could go throw another shot. Man, it was like, it, uh, these guys today are soft. Whoa. Here's the kid. Now that shot misses the one-two pocket. 
two, four, seven remain for Robards. One of the other issues, Dave, that the players have to deal with here, and a lot of reason, uh, a, 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 a big reason why a lot of the players split, is because it's very dry here, and you you take that dryness along with the amount of games that Jason had to bowl. Remember, this guy was sent to Masters Purgatory when he lost his very first match, and then was sent to the losers bracket, and he spent the rest of his time in that bracket. Never fun. That was a spare game I a brought to you by Guaranteed Rate. If you believe it, you can do it. Guaranteed Rate. Believe you will. The youngster with a 2 4 7. And that purgatory, Randy, lasted a long time last night. We were here late last it, it, night it, watching. It's the one thing about the Masters that you don't want to have happen to you. Because once you lose, you go down to that loser's bracket, you're going to spend a lot of time there to get to the show. All right, come on. So it's a double elimination format, right? So you lose once, you get down a loser's bracket, you lose again, you're out. And Spencer almost was out at the very end last night. It was dramatic. Yep. Left lane, Robards. <laughs> Tap on the six, down it goes. Sterner, Robards, Randy, halfway home. This is going to be a great finish from Reno today, oh, buddy. It really is. Robards carries that late six spin. Jason Sterner still trying to get dialed in. The youngster with a 12 pin lead. Can Sterner bounce back and regain some confidence when we return? Saturday night, the NASCAR Cup Series moves to FS1, where we could see our eighth different winner of the season. Catch all the action from Martinsville with the Blue Emu Maximum Pain Relief 500, Saturday at 7 Eastern on FS1 and anywhere on the Fox Sports app. Second half, second match from Reno. Dave, Randy, Kimberly, our entire crew. Watching the fourth of five majors on the season. We talked about how gru gru grueling this event is, and Jason said, you know, if it wasn't for girlfriend Heather Dorico, there's no way he would have been able to last in the loser's bracket like he did. Whoa, Jesus. whoa, whoa. Way light. Oh, come on. Looks like he just missed that one at the bottom. He's trying to keep his hand underneath it and roll it forward, and it looks like he Basically, like a wet bar of soap out of your hand, all three fingers coming out at once. Top three advance to the final. Sam Cooley was barely out by just seven pins last night. You're late. Nice. Seven pins, that's all Sterner gets on that effort. The difficult leave. One, two, seven, eight, ten. Yeah, so that's disaster twice because he did it on a spare and then he lost more pin count, so it's almost like two open frames in one. That hurts, and Jason knows it as he stares skyward here in Reno. Robars twice now has taken advantage of mistakes from his opponent. The kid's working on a strike. Left lane, Stern needs some magic. Fast, that's high. And the baby split 3-10. And that's always the tendency when you go light, is to make sure you don't do it again, right? So human instinct as well. Let me make sure I get this one a little bit. And then that time he gets a little too much of it at the release point, the ball over hooks. Seventh and 09, long time ago. Best prior USBC Masters finish. Jacob Buttriff, our defending champ, but that was in 2019. The event was not held last year due to COVID. Baby split, 310, no, no. Chops and leaves the 10 pin. And on the bench, Robarge is in great shape here. 41 pin lead to his seventh working on a strike. Thomas Larson, two seed. Looking for his first career major from Denmark. He's next against the winner of this one, which right now looks like this guy. Split other side. The 2-7. Uh, just a miss inside of target. Fair enough. 
and you can see it right there. Blue line is his ideal line. Good three boards left. Look how close he is to the bar return. And just tugs this one a bit. Remember we talked about how good a spare shooter he is. Let's see and take out, take on the two seven. You saw you that replay look from down lane, Randy, how frustrated Jason Stern was. He was pounding the table there in frustration and just knows that he has given Robarge a wide open door to walk through to win what would be his second USPC Masters TV show win. I mean, I think if you really study the tournament and look at the brackets, it'll really tell you a lot about what Jason Sterner had to go through yesterday. And then the quick turnaround time for television today, Dave. And yeah, I mean, 11 o'clock here. He's in great shape like we talked about. It, 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 there's no arguing that. But he's 37. And, I mean, what, what he had to go through yesterday after losing in the very first round, and then basically, it's, it's like being sent to Alcatraz, uh, and, and then you have to somehow find your way off the island. That's a lot better. It might be too late, though. And we talked to him during warm-ups with his, lots of re-rack here. With a thumb injury, Kimberly documented, he's like, look, suck it up, Buttercup. <laughs> like, it, it, yeah, it's too bad. I mean, that, that's the other thing. I, it, wondering if the patch is holding, what his thumb feels like, his hands destroyed, and now he has to somehow fight through it and then get ready for the U.S. Open, which is right around the corner. Three titles in his career. Masters champ back in 03. Now he's taking on one of the top youth bowlers in the world, and he is in trouble. He's got a habit. Yeah. Good shot. Hang on. And, and the bump. No. The 10 would not fall. Yeah, well, pretty good shot, but unfortunately that non-reactive bowling ball not driving through the pins hard enough to cover that 10. All row barge in match number two. First ever major show for Sterner. Looks like it's going to end in disappointment. If the kid can deliver the KO punch. Jason told us last night he wrote his goals out. Wanted them to win a major. But he said getting the show's not enough. Now he's got a huge hill to climb. Robard! Wow. Huh. Wow. Another full rack attack by Robards. That's it. It's over. Hear the, the I music. love the disco. Listen to the music that he we listens. Bee Gees. It's awesome. It's so old school. Oh, so good. So refreshing. I was telling him during warm-ups today, I said, man, it makes an old guy like me feel good yeah. to see all this old school stuff. He said, Dave, you're not old. No. And then he's like, uh, actually. <laughs> well, when he made the comment about... Uh, not being a real techie guy, a real technical guy, you like totally lit Oh, up. I love that. Yeah. It's so hard for me. Yeah. I well, mean, you and I are the age where we can remember telephones that are in the wall and pre internet yeah. and yeah, I remember, no Twitter and Facebook. I'm, I'm fine with that. I, I'm so old, I remember a two cans and a string. <laughs> That's going way back. His ball reaction is starting to look pretty chummy now. Thank you. And you just know the confidence is building. 
Sterner will step aside and will have to wait for his first career major title for another time. This match is over mathematically. We're gonna fast track it through to hurry things along here. Spencer talked with his teachers, told them, you know, for a couple weeks, I'm gonna leave Springfield, do a lot of online learning anyway. I'm gonna be in Reno for USBC Masters and the US Open. His teachers were totally fine with that. I love that, Randy. Kudos to the administration at Kickapoo High School. And they remember what they told him before he left for Reno. Spencer, no gambling. <laughs> Just win, that's all. We can't wait for the next match. More great bowling is on the way. Larson, Robarge. Robarge, beat Chris Fye, 213, 194. We welcome you back to the 2021 USBC Masters here on FS1 from Reno, Nevada. Then in match two, got by Jason Sterner, 224 to 166. Impressive for the youngster who finished out on a strike streak of four straight to wrap up his second win in a televised PBA USBC event. Here he is, head to head with Thomas Larson from Denmark. And this young man, Randy, has lived up to the hype, yeah. to say the least. He really has. He hasn't been tested yet. Uh, he's been ahead in, in every match. And it's going to be interesting to see as he goes high and starts out with an open. It'll right, be interesting to, to see if he gets pushed or if he gets tested, how he responds. Last night in the seeding round of this event, he responded magnificently you're assuming he will not convert this one uh this is this is the big so, four I mean, without the seven without pin. the seven it's almost and it that big four has only been converted once on television and that was by walter a williams jr four six ten it's tough and like randy said an open frame which chair are you in okay i've been over here Our number two seed at the 2021 USBC Masters comes to us from Skandrup, Denmark, looking for his first career major. It's Thomas Larson. Thomas Larson is an 11 year journeyman on the PBA Tour. The smooth stroking, soft spoken European is looking to win for the first time on US soil. Can the Great Dane pull off a major victory here in Reno? We saw fellow Danish star Carson Hansen win in Centerville, Virginia last year. Part of the 2020 World Series of Bowling. Maybe it's his turn here today. Pin action's good, but somehow all that shrapnel avoids the 10 pin. Playing the same part of the lane that Jason Sterner was, except he's using reactive resin. Sterner was using non-reactive. As we take a look from profile, as he opens that hand up, and then it gets that hand right behind the ball in a great position. This guy is a shot maker, and he's not a real high rev rate, high power guy, but when you play the right side of the lane for a right-hander, you now can use angle as we take a look at his road to getting here. When you can use angle, you don't need that big high rev rate to strike as often. It's when you have to get really deep inside and create a lot of angle. Has two titles, avoids the double wood. And just the two pin to deal with here for Larson. Barely avoided the 210 split there, partner. You don't want that, Randy. No. He's just trying to get the nerves under control right now and get uh, get his legs underneath him. Third match for Robars. He's got the nerves out long ago here in Reno. The impact of the pandemic on youth sports has been significant. And while recovery has started in some communities, too many children in need are still 
on the sideline. Visit GoodSports.org to learn how you can help Fox Sports and Good Sports restore play for at-risk youth and programs that serve them through donations of brand new sports equipment. The youngster, right lane. Whoa. Whoa, those pins had no chance. Yeah, nice bounce back shot after the open in the first. And again, taking a look at our great strike track numbers and also lots of great data being brought to you by Lane Talk. For more information, go to lanetalk.com as we take a look at the last shot by Spencer. That looked like he created a mosh pit in the back of the pin deck there. I like that. And the old soul himself. Seven pin. Good try. Yeah, unusual leap uh, for a player with that much power. A tremendous Straight strength up. in his lower body to be able to generate the ball speed that he does. Left lane, watch it. Oh, Whoa. just got enough. He wasn't sure, you weren't sure. Just nicked it. It's airborne at the foul line, and it looked like he was going to whiff it. He throws kind of a semi backup ball when he shoots his spares, and that was the one thing that saved it. Marcel Langley. Two good stands. Well, he's got to give it a little more hand because that reactive resin ball is going as straight as Jason Sterner's. Urethane ball was going. See that open hand again, and just zero down lane reaction. He said it was last night, very pleasantly surprised, takes care of the single pin spare conversion, that he got to the number two seed because, in his words, this pattern, brutal. Yeah, but you know what? It, he, I think the tougher they get, the better it is for Thomas Larson. Um, and especially with the format, only five games, every block's on a uh, fresh oil pattern. And so you don't have to get in and loft it over the left gutter cap. And so now he can compete with the high rep players. Four frame works on a spare. Nice. Crunches the one three pocket. Nothing so, left. Sorry, sorry, Dave. Remember what I said that he's got to get more hand and it creates motion. He does exactly that on this shot. He gives it a little more fingers, a little more hand, and watch the ball reaction. It's revving harder, it's revving faster, and now all of a sudden it breaks loose and curves in the back part of the lane. Thomas was pleased to report that back home in Denmark, the government, because of his athletic status, allowed him to practice. And gain access to facilities where the public was not able to due to COVID. Robarge, another great Funny. shot. Take a re rack. Take a look at Spencer from profile. Look how wide open he gets. I don't know how you run that fast to the foul line sideways. Is that like a prowl? I mean, what's the best way to it, describe that approach? It, He's so low. Well, I mean, like, you know, Belmonte does it. Simonson does it a little bit, but right. uh, Jesper does. Jesper not quite as much, but these guys get so sideways. I, I, I just, I don't know how you can continually keep your feet moving that fast because your feet are essentially sideways. Come on. Yes. Tattoos the one-two pocket. This young man is serious. A double and the lead. 
youngster from Missouri. Thomas Larson, not to be confused with Martin Larson. Martin from Sweden. Thomas from Denmark, no relation. There's the hand. Yep. And all of a sudden, he's starting to see the picture. First couple of shots go light, and he's like, yeah, you know, I'm playing in that zone I wanted to play, and the ball's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. I got to change something. That's exactly what he just did in the last two shots. Very close friends with Sam Cooley. Told us last night yep. how emotional that was when Sam won his title in Tampa, the World Series of Bowling recently. Yeah, it was one, another one, one of many great stories that we've oh had on gosh. the PBA Tour. Wow. Watching Sam win. Sam lost his mom due to cancer. Much longer than four minutes. Meant a lot to him. Meant a lot to his friend Thomas Larson. Halfway home, Randy. Can the kid keep it going or what? Well, it's the first time all afternoon the youngster has been trailing. Spencer Robards come back from break and take the lead back again. For the first time ever, it's a WrestleMania edition of SmackDown. Friday at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Can't wait for that. Can't wait for the conclusion of this match as well. Our youngster Randy works on a double, but he's behind. That has not been the case all day. You are correct, sir. Chance to cut it to nine here. Looks for the turkey in the sixth. Make things really interesting. You bet. Well, he pured that one. Huh. That would have knocked 20 pins down. He's had a great touch to it, and then obviously ends up in a perfect spot. He's showing you what he's made of, and again, these uh, these youth bowlers of today are so seasoned. They're they they're not afraid. They know how to bowl. They know about their equipment. Two up, two down so far for Robars today. To take the lead right here. Seventh for a one-pin lead. Oh, way off. Uh. One. Three nine. Yeah, you can see it right there. That red line. All right, spare it up. And spare it up. This is probably just adrenaline, knowing that he can take the lead with this shot, and he just threw it right through the break point. Nice cover, nice mark for the fifth seed, Spencer Robars, who has right. competed in two okay. U.S. Opens. Never made a show until today. He'll be here in Reno, just going to stay for the U.S. Open next week as well, as we see Larson's arsenal. Larson's best finish in a major, 13th Players' Championship. Big shot. Oh boy. Yes. Oh boy. That ball got through the arrows and in about 20 feet, it grabbed a little friction. That's exactly what he's looking for playing that zone in that part of the lane. For Bagger. Mentioned Martin Larson earlier in. Th their styles are very similar in that they really get that hand open uh, at the top of the backswing. And both are real touch finesse players. Oh, he pulled it so bad. Oh! Look at that right there. See Way the wide left on the near Brooklyn strike leads a six pin. Yeah, big, big giant gap between the two. That was a big miss. Are they going to reset? Hard to hard to believe that uh, a player like Thomas Larson, who re relies on accuracy, would miss like that. But hey, it even happens to the best in the world. And I think a lot of times it's easy to lose track of the fact of how difficult 
this oil pattern is when the guys make it look easy. Has his mark. Strikes streak over at four for Larson. And a chance to really blow up the lead. But keeps it within 21. Robarge, who works on a spare into his eighth frame. Spencer's mom is here in Reno, unfortunately, due to right, come on. local COVID protocol. She can't be in the stadium to watch. No fans allowed. But she's close by supporting Spencer. Watch on FS1. <laughs> the rest of Kickapoo High School hoping for a win for this young guy. Yeah. All right. Mom, you've done an amazing job with this young man. I can tell you that. Everybody that's come into contact right. with you never know. Spencer from the players to us and everybody in between has been nothing but impressed with that young man. And I'll play I'll play him in pinball any time. Will any, you anywhere? OK, I want to see that match. Put that up on Facebook Live. I mean, I think we should get it on Fox. You know, I call the play by play. I'm ready for it. Yeah, I get to pick the machine. Spencer now trailing by 22, ninth right. and tenth frame coming up, and he really needs to put a couple strikes together. His max score, you can see at 225, Larson at 227 right now. Takes his second re-rack here, Randy. Second and final. I think this is a must strike for him here in the ninth frame. All right, come on. Force him to show up. That's a Force him to show up. Perfect ball to have right there. Best shot you got right here. Come on. That boy. Come on. Good shot here. Let's go. Really needs one of the night. Another big fan to the left for yeah. Spencer. And you can see the numbers right here. You just can't miss by that much right, up. on this oil pattern. It's just so unforgiving. Terrible. Yeah, and he's, you heard him say, he said, that's terrible. He knows it. Little or no chance now. Thomas Larson just needs to All continue right. doing what he's doing and fill frames, and he'll be in the 220s. Will it be an all-European matchup for the 2021 Masters title? Right. Run, one from Sweden, Never one know. from Denmark. It's just going to take two marks for uh. Thomas Larson, one in the ninth frame, one in the tenth frame. And he's going to move on to face Jesper Svensson. Needs eight on this shot to knock out the kid. Larson won the PBA Cheetah Championship 2017 here in Reno. Sorry, second that year. Whoa! Seven. He needs one. Just one pin to wrap it up, but a heart-stopping moment there for Larson on that shot when he needed eight to wrap it up. They go for the... Whoa! Oh! They so just thought it was the <laughs> ten pin. Get... Let's Just got the eight, Randy. I mean, oh. he, it almost looked like he threw, it looked like it was going into the gutter. That was insane. He can laugh uh. now because he barely beats Robars to advance. That was wild.
I thought for a second he was going to miss them all. Oh. Getting the eight pin from behind the two is no easy matter on that double wood. All right, spread up. And Crazy. Thomas Larson, by a whisker, will advance to take on Jesper Svensson in the championship match of the 2021 USBC Masters. Great Incredible. Show. Yeah, great showing for Spencer. Oh, great. Larson, uh, kind of a crazy wild finish here at the end. We'll see if there's anything left on the left side of the lane for Jesper Svensson. Back in 2017, PBA Cheetah Championship in Reno. Larson second to Jesper Svensson. And they'll match up again here. A major title at stake from Reno, Nevada. You'll see the title match next here on FS1. Let's go back to 2010, Walter Ray Williams Jr. One of his 47 titles and eight majors, one of two Masters titles for the legend who just recently retired last month in Tampa from the PBA National Tour. Two Masters titles for the great Walter Ray Williams Jr. Who wins today? Svensson and Larson, our championship match is on the way. Kimberly now joined by the youngster, Spencer Robarge. Thanks, Dave. Spencer, much different match three than the first two. What happened? You know, I threw a couple of bad shots coming down the stretch in the seventh and ninth. Um, you know, my misses whenever I've missed, they've been pretty bad and uh, just had two bad ones right together, so. Well, you've had a great week, but you still got another one ahead of you because you have the U.S. Open. So what can you take from today to move forward in this week? I definitely, um, you know, understand the lane play in this building a little bit better. Um, this was a really brutal pattern, um, and the U.S. Open is going to have three of those. Um, so I think that's going to set me up pretty well for the U.S. Open. Maybe not the way that you wanted this day to end, but you have to be proud of yourself. You made history today by making a major show as an amateur. Yeah, it's uh, it's unbelievable. I know Brett Wolf did it here uh, in 2002, the year that I was born, and he was able to win. Um, and I'm not sure how many amateurs have made it since then, but it's it's awesome to be a part of that. And you know, the age doesn't hurt either. Well, congratulations on a great week and good luck in the U.S. Open. Thank you, Kimberly. Thanks. What a run for the youngster from Missouri. This guy from Sweden wants one thing, a second career major. He'll take on Thomas Larson for the title next from Reno. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. If you believe it, you can do it. Guaranteed Rate. Believe you will. And by Kia. Introducing the all-new Sorento, the world's first storytelling machine. Downtown Reno, Nevada, Truckee River. Just a beautiful place. Outside, inside, Cathedral Bowling, the National Bowling Stadium, and that trophy is on the line. Randy set for a championship match. Larson, Svensson, our tail of the tape. It's an all-Scandinavian matchup, and you can see that uh, Larson is, uh, has got a little more experience in terms of years, but all the titles and all the hardware right here in the Jesper camp. Should be a good one. We had a couple of lane technical difficulties during the commercial break. So guys are still getting their warm-ups in. Uh, live uninterrupted coverage of the championship match here in Reno to crown a USBC Masters winner in 2021. So glad to even say that, Randy, after last year. So amazing. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a real, really a shame that the fans can't be here for this event to see all the renovations that have been done here at the National Bowling amazing. Stadium. It, it really is a beautiful, beautiful place. Um, and if you've never been here, uh, as soon as we get back to a little more norm normalcy, you have to plan a trip to the National Bowling, Bowling Center here in Reno. You got to hope for 2022. Yeah. We can get fans back in. Yep. And we hope. Yeah, and I think that's kind of the target. We'll take another quick break here, and when we return, it's the championship match. Spence and Larson on the way. A major is at stake.
getting close. Championship match here in Reno, Nevada. Larson, Svensson, head to head. Only one will take home the trophy, the big prize money. And a part of history. Here he is from Gothenburg, Sweden, looking for his second career major, the top seed, the Iceman himself, Jesper Svensson. Like Dave said, the Iceman cometh, 160 pounds of raw fury. The lanky Swede possesses the most powerful strike ball on tour, and today he looks to power his way to his second major title. And Limited that, arsenal there, RP. Uh, no, not for him. Not for him. He likes that one. All right. Some issue with the pin setter. Ready now. Championship match underway. Uninterrupted here. Oh. Press one and oh. a good start for oh. Jesper. Oh. Yeah, doing his best Geppetto there, just carving wood. And we've come to kind of expect that from... Jesper Svensson. You can see that uh, on that shot there, he's going to be well inside of where Spencer Robards was playing on the left side. Larson responds. So is that how you thought Jesper would play it based on Robards being there? I mean, everything that's on. Yeah, absolutely. Everything that the players told us is held true where Chris Five played it, where Sterner played it, where Larson's playing it. Spencer played a little farther left. He said he was going to do that. Jesper said, I think that Spencer is going to help me. He's going to build up a little trough for me, and I'm going to be inside of that. It's exactly what we've seen. Oh, really nice start for Larson. I think he's going to be uh, extremely difficult to beat. And I say that because he has a nice look. Now he's got a nice reaction, and he's got a game under his belt. Two titles in his career, but none on U.S. soil. 2013 Abu Dhabi Open, 2014 Kuwait International Open, where he beat Englishman Dom Barrett by three pins in the title match. Row to TV for Jesper. Undefeated. Including over Larson. Oh! Pin action. Shrapnel flying everywhere, Randy. Uh, it's just disgusting. I mean, that messenger would have made Chuck Norris jealous. <laughs> Look at that. Oh. It's good stuff. I mean, if you like power and a lot of pin action, you got to like watching Jesper Svensson. Perfect start. Four up, four down for these two stars. Oh, uh, didn't like it. That's why. High, two, four. And this is why. Big miss left, excuse me, big miss right for Jesper. And it doesn't take much on this pattern. This old pattern is very unforgiving. Nice cover. Three and four. Career under the bright lights of TV in major events. And one title so far for Jesper. Could be two. If he can come through against this guy, but it's not going to be easy. Larson has a great look early in our championship match. Hurts for the first three. Oh, it's my. the big four instead. All right. My goodness. And that looked pretty good, too, off his hand. And it just kept hooking. And 
I got to be honest with you, this was the last thing I thought Thomas Larson would do. Dave, I honestly thought he was going to live in the pocket in this title match. So what happened? Uh, it's, it's, that's a great question. I don't know if he threw it slower because the, um, the strike track said that he was still up in the 19s, but that ball just overhooked. I don't know if he grabbed it or hit it a little bit harder at the release point, but something definitely changed, obviously, because the location looked fine. Slightly left of target. And he leaves the four pin. It might be time to make a move left. Because they almost split again. So if he liked the shot on the right lane, you're going to see him move. Single pin, spare conversion has the four. Has his mark, but he flirted with disaster on that left lane. So, if you're in the shoes of Jesper, and you see your opponent struggle a little bit and lose his look after the first three strikes, what are you thinking about if you're Jesper Spence? Well, it helps you breathe a little easier, right? So now you've got a nice little cushion, a nice little lead early, and now you can go ahead and breathe, breathe a sigh of relief. The messenger across the deck. You take out number seven. <laughs> Down you go. Wow. Wow, that was awesome. Yeah, man, this is pretty cool stuff. Again, just uh, just excitement. Headpin goes to the sidewall and comes back for seconds. Jesper takes one of his two re-racks in this championship match. After that wild strike. Do you like the use of the re-rack there? I like whatever he does. <laughs> Honest answer. This guy's still really young. We're 26. One re-rack left. Oh, oh. Yeah. come on. Here goes the buckle. And our strike track powered by Kia. His line looked pretty good, so maybe just a pinch faster where he missed it at the bottom. Three, five, six up here for Jesper. 71 plus percent conversion rate, which goes up with that spare. It's good cover. did not come from Denmark to the U.S. to Jupiter, Florida for the Players Championship. Was concerned about the COVID restrictions getting back home. Oh, boy. Whoa. Huge break there by tripping the 10 late. Still a 1-2-8. Yeah, this is just an errant shot. I mean, you can see the the tracer there, the red line, and I mean, that's way right. And they're really slick out that part of the lane. Just an errant shot. Two days before he's supposed to fly, he canceled his trip. Nice cover there. But as we talked about, the government in Denmark has been very Cooperative and understanding of professional athletes allowing him practice time, access to the lanes back home. So when he did get over stateside for the World Series of Bowling, felt very comfortable, was ready. I wonder if he's nervous. You wouldn't know it. I, I wonder. <laughs> if, no, I, seriously, because just because of the, the shot, the shots he's thrown the last the last three shots have looked. 
Not very good. That's the best shot I've seen him throw in four shots. Arena 10 pin left lane. That's definitely a little bit farther left than where he's been. Ten pin, no worries there. The guy who's covered bowling at age nine. Went to the local bowling center in Denmark. He's an outing with his school buddies. He had never heard of the sport, didn't know what it was. No idea. Fell in love with bowling right away. This guy's been a powerhouse for a while. And will be so for years to come. Did like it. He turned away from that one. Two, four, seven. And right now, the players just are not executing. Yeah, he knew it. He didn't even have to watch it. He knew it was going to be through the nose or Brooklyn. And leaves himself the two, four, seven. Now, some marginal shot making going on right now, and even on the uh, spare attempts. And again, on this oil pattern, you have to be so good and so precise. And if you're if you're not, you can open so easily. We talked about his success in this building with us last night. A couple of titles, feels very comfortable here. One key reason he became the top seed for the USBC Masters here today. See Max scores. Spence in. Oh no, oh my, Randy again the big four. Incredible, wow. Uh, well, this is how major championships are won and lost. Just a gift right back to Thomas Larson. Only done once. PBA Tour history on TV. By the great Walter Ray Williams Jr. Conversion of the Big Four. Leaves the 4-7. One pin match. Seventh for Larson. Works on a spare. Farther uh, left for Larson on this shot here. Finds a little bit more oil and give it the nice soft touch and comes in light for the mixer. For Larson didn't like it at all. Whoa, wow. Way light, way off. Oh, he's beautiful. I mean, it, that's a good three and a half boards at the break point. These two players are really struggling with execution right now. One, two, four. Let's cover that. Okay. This is going to be a grind it out slug, slug fest here, Randall. Yeah, it's going to come down to the ninth and tenth, and 
Jesper Svensson steps up on the right lane. He chose to start the match, which means he's going to finish the match, and he's going to finish on that right lane, and he hasn't hit the pocket in the last three shots. Up one, comes off and open. Got no chance. What? Come on. What is happening right now? Three seven. Yeah, well, I don't think Jesper has an idea of what his ball is doing or what it's going to do. I mean, the start looks so promising, and now it's going to be back to back opens if he doesn't convert the 3 7. That's tough. Got it! Let me tell you how huge that conversion is. The three off the side wall in the pit, and down goes the seven pin. This is a great cover. The player trying to win his second major. This is a major championship. One of the hardest events to win on the PBA Tour. Belmont, he won it three straight years in a row. Only player to ever do that. And right now, Jesper Svensson looking to win his second major, but in order to do that, he's gonna have to figure something out and figure something out real quick. He has not hit the pocket in four straight shots. Just took his second and final re-rack of the match. Larson has two left. Left lane. Better shot. Six pin stands. Well, and you're right, it was a better shot, Dave. Uh, it, it actually hit the pocket. But he's done on that left lane. He, he's only uh, He only has one more frame, and that's the 10th. And he'll do that on the right lane. But because he didn't strike there, uh, Thomas Larson can now get up and strike ninth and 10th and 11th and lock. Jesper Svensson out. Has a spare. The high score of our TV show today was Robarge against Sterner with a 224. That's been a hit. It's been a battle on these incredibly competitive and challenging conditions. All he has to do is execute. I think he knows exactly what his ball is going to do if he can hit his target and throw it properly. All tied up. Huge shot. Foundation frame. Yes. Well, he got it a little bit wide, but he got just enough of it at the release point to get it to come around the corner. And he's going to take a re-rack here on the left lane in his 10th frame. But you can see he got it a little bit right, but got enough hand in it to make it grab the lane and hook up into the pocket and then the nice pin carry just enough two here in the tenth and he wins his first major wins his first ever televised finals here on US soil does he have the first one yes he does that was perfect Great shot. One more strike and one pin is all he needs. If he gets nine and a spare, Jesper would need all three to win by one. Biggest shot of this young man's, well, he's not such a young man anymore, but biggest shot of this 31-year-old's career right here. Oh, he pulled it. it. He yanked it. Doesn't get it. Oh, look at that oh. miss. And he's going to be kicking himself if Jesper Spenson can pull oh. this miracle off. And if Jesper does strike out in the 10th frame, it'll be a miracle. Not over yet.
has a three pin. <laughs> and I mean, this is just immediately left. You can see it right there. That's a really nice break, too, chipping the 10 late. Because if he goes eight spare, Jesper needs a double and nine. All three. Three strikes to win on a day where he struggled with his look to the one two pocket. Does he have number one? No. Incredible. That's it. Thomas Larson has won his first career major championship. He takes the 2021 USPC Masters. Third title, first major for Denmark's yeah. Thomas Larson. What a day for Thomas. Oh, thank you, Storm. Thanks, Vice. Thanks, everyone back home. Hannah, uh, parents, uh, I love you all. This means, this means so much. Thomas, you are known to be a very quiet guy, and I see you getting very emotional, and for good reason. You said when you came to the States, you were looking forward to coming to this building and bowling here. Tell us why. I've always done well here, made a show every year, uh, made it this year, and, and came away with this. And it feels a little like when my, when my friend Tom Hess won it 10 years ago. It's just awesome. Describe <laughs> this moment for you. Uh, it's great. It's, it's a lot of hard work that finally pays off. Uh, getting that major puts you, yeah, makes you historical. That's, it's awesome. Can you walk us through that 10th frame? Because you needed two strikes and one pin in order to shut out Jesper, but you didn't get that. No, the first one was, I, I couldn't have thrown that one better and couldn't have thrown the second one much worse. Just so hard when you, when you get to that situation, you throw a good shot and I was just lucky that I got through it. Well, Thomas, you are a Masters champion. How does that sound? <laughs> sounds great, uh, sounds great. It's, it's been a long time and I just, I want to thank everyone, Storm, Vice, my friend Brad Angelo, Ball you for, for helping me. It's just, it's been so great. Well, congratulations, you've earned this. Kimberly, thanks. What a day for Thomas Larson, the guaranteed rate. PBA Tour returns the next two weeks with huge events next Sunday, April 11th, to Eastern. On FS1, we return right here to the National Bowling Stadium in Reno. Live coverage of the U.S. Open, our fifth and final major of the season. And in two weeks Sunday, April 18th, 1230 Eastern, on Fox. Live coverage of the PBA Super Slam. All five major champs from Bolero, Annandale, and Annandale, Virginia. Now for Andy Peterson, Hall of Famer. Kimberly Pressler, Dave Bryant saying so long from Reno, Nevada. You've been watching the PBA on FS1. What a day for Thomas Larson. In the end, the two seed just a little better than the top seed, Jesper Svensson. And for the first time in his career, he is a major champion. He wins the 2021 USBC Masters from here in Reno, Nevada.